Hello everyone. My name is Nomu Sherpa and I'm from the Department of Sociology, Salation College, Sunada. The topic that I will be covering today is for the students of fourth semester, core paper 8, and the name of the paper is Rural Sociology in India. I've taken up uh, one of the section from unit 2, which is the agrarian class. So today I'll be talking about agrarian class and the classifications which have been made by Daniel Thorner and D. N. Thanagare. So Daniel Thorner is a scholar of Marxist approach. He was born in America and is known for his work on agricultural economics and Indian economic history. And D. N. Thanagare is an Indian sociologist who specialized in farmers' movements and rural sociology. Let us begin now. What does agrarian mean? Agrarian means anything which is related to land, its management or distribution. An agrarian society is one which focuses its economy. primarily on agriculture and the cultivation of large fields this is what distinguishes it from the hunter gatherer society why because the hunter gatherer society produces none of its own food and the horticultural society which produces food but in small gardens rather than fields so now let us come to daniel thorner and let us discuss the classifications made by him so um Daniel Thorner has studied the agrarian class structure and forms of agrarian class conflict and uh, he has made a uh, classification in three categories he has made his classification in three categories uh, the malik the kisan and the mazdoor based on the amount of actual labor contributed to the production process and the pattern of sharing produced is closer to marxian approach so what did he mean by the malik by malik or proprietor Thorner meant a family whose agricultural income is derived primarily, although not necessarily solely, from property rights in the soil. The malik or the proprietor usually, but not necessarily, enjoys a high type of property right in the soil. He may hold directly under the government, or he may be a superior tenant with rights of occupancy. The total amount of land held is such that the income from it reserves to meet the major shares of the family expenses. One or the other of the family may act as a supervisor, but none is needed to work with his hands in the field for survival. So none of them work in the field with their hands for survival. Now we come to the second point, uh, second category that is the kisans. Who are the kisans? The kisans or the working peasants constitutes the second class. They have a recognized property interest in the land. They may be small owners or tenants with varying degrees of security, by and large but not always. Their legal and customary rights will be somewhat inferior to those of maliks in the same village. Their chief identity is the size of their land holdings which is which is such that it supports a single family that too when one or the other member of the family actually perform the fields labor the produce of the kisan may not be often enough for sustenance of the entire family hence uh, it you know the whatever they earn cannot contribute to the major share of expenses of the family so you know in order to supplement that they have they you know either work somewhere else they have other sources of employment or agricultural labor they work as agricultural labor the third class which is found in rural areas is that of laborers or mazdoors this group comprises those villages who gain their livelihood primarily from working on other people's lands that means they do not have their own land the mazdoors may be having tenancy rights in the soil or even property rights but the land holdings are so small the income that the income from agriculture or renting out comes comes to less than earnings from selling their labor in the field so the classification which i have discussed uh, right now the three classifications which have been made by daniel thorner above uh, shows that the key factor is the amount of actual labor It shows that uh, the key factor that has been taken into consideration is the amount of actual labor contributed to the production process and the share in the product daniel thorner has classified the agrarian population in the economic perspective and consequently pointed out the realities of agrarian situation and provided a challenge to reorient reorient investigations 
investigations for more empirical studies. He has directly taken up the questions of ownership control and the use of landed property by different categories of rural people and has not given much significance to the heterogeneity of the caste hierarchy while explaining the problems of agrarian society. He appears to be interested in understanding the pattern through which various categories of people are associated with land and also the pattern of sharing produced by them. Again, following the Marxian approach, he divides the agrarian society into two classes. Number one, who owns land and number two, people are those who do not own land. So, one who owns land does not participate in the actual operation of the production and gets the major share of the produce. And then the other, others, the second category of people are those who do not own any land but contribute labor to the production and gets minor share. So here we see that the people who own land excessively exploit the latter, means the people who do not own land and thus agrarian. This is the reason that may majority of the agrarian problems emerge. Thus we see here that despite the diversity of social arrangement found in rural countryside in India, Daniel Thorner has attempted to reduce them in well-defined and precise social categories on the basis of uh, number one, uh, type of income obtained from the soil. So, uh, you know, type of income ob obtained from the soil, we have uh, three categories, A, rent, B, fruits of own cultivation, C, wages. And under nature of rights comes A, propriety, proprietary or ownership, B, tenancy with varying degree of tenorial security c share cropping rights d no rights at all third category the extent of field work actually performed absentee who does not work at all a and b those who perform partial work c total work done by actual cultivators with family labor d where work is done entirely for others to earn wages so this is what uh, Daniel Thorner discusses in his classification. Now I'll be coming up, uh, coming to D. N. Thanagari. Uh, as I already said, he's an Indian sociologist. So Thanagari, in his classification of the agrarian class, classified the peasants on the pattern of Daniel Thorner with slight modification. He has made slight modification, and the categories are number one, landlords. So who are the landlords? Landlords derive income primarily from land ownership by collecting re rents from tenants, subtenants and sharecroppers. Uh, then he has uh, the second category is rich peasants. Rich peasants are the small landowners with sufficient land to support family and who cultivate land themselves. Rich peasants. Then we have the rich tenants. Rich tenants, that is number three. Rich tenants are those who have substantial land holdings and have to pay or nominal rent to their landlords. Number four, middle peasants. Middle peasants are landowners of medium sized holdings and tenants with substantial holdings and paying higher rent. And then we have the poor peasants. The poor peasants are number five, that is poor peasants. Poor peasants are landowners with insufficient land holdings to maintain a family and therefore forced to rent others, um, rent land to others and also includes landless labors. Laborers, laborers. So these are the classifications which have been made by D. N. Thanagre. If we analyze class structure in rural India in the past independence uh, period, in the past independence period, we find four classes. The three classes in the agric agricultural field are of landowners, tenants, and laborers, while the fourth class is of non-agriculturalist. According to A. R. Desai. Landowners constitute about 22%, tenants about 27%, agricultural laborers about 31% and non-agriculturalists about 21%. So now we see that the study of agrarian social structure has been taken up by anthropologists, sociologists, economists on a broader plane. The agrarian system as is conceived by social scientists in general has been related to land and its utilization and productive purpose. The study of agrarian system will center around the problem of land and its utilization for productive purposes. In a land-based social and economic system, the significance of this kind of study hardly requires emphasis. So with this, I come to the end of my lesson. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. Take care.